Hello everyone, so in this video I'm going to talk about the NumPy library that we've been uh, using since the first video but without really uh, explicitly um, using it uh, as it's the, uh, the library that's used by scikit-image to store the images once we've read them uh, from, the, from the file. So NumPy is really the, probably the most commonly um, used library for scientific computing, so it's very uh, powerful um, for numerical computing and more specifically for um, for arrays computing, so anything uh, any operation involving uh, arrays and matrices, which makes it also um, very useful for uh, image processing, as images are just uh, typically 2D or 3D arrays of uh, of numbers. Um, so what I want mostly to focus on uh, in this video is the ways to uh, to manipulate to uh, index uh, the the numpy arrays uh, to show how uh, operations are made on numpy arrays and how we can access uh, different parts of the array uh, selectively uh, as those are really uh, common operations for for um, for image processing uh, if you want to go uh, a lot more into details about uh, all of that uh, in the NumPy documentation, what I will be talking about today is mostly uh, found in the uh, indexing and broadcasting uh, sections. So if you if you go on those pa pages in the NumPy uh, manual, you will find really uh, lots of details about how this works. And more specifically for, for images in the scikit image documentation, you can also find um, most of the information that I will be uh, showing uh, here. So. Um, to quickly uh, get, get uh, into it, I've already prepared a, uh, a Jupyter notebook uh, with uh, different things that I want to, to, to show you and I'm going to be uh, explaining um, as I'm executing it. So the first thing is that uh, if we really want to, to start using uh, NumPy uh, more explicitly, we first need to import it. So I will uh, import NumPy as NP for the rest of this uh, of, the, of this video, and uh, the c this is the conventionally used uh, shortcut for, for, for NumPy uh, that almost everyone uh, uses. So the first thing is uh, how to uh, create a NumPy array. So until now, we've just been loading an image, and that scikit image uh, puts the, 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 the values, the pixel values, into a NumPy array. Uh, if you want to create a NumPy array from scratch, we have different methods. First thing is that we can um, create one uh, that will be filled with uh, zeros or with ones, so with the uh, zeros and ones uh, method. And inside we put the shape of the array, so here it will be uh, three rows and two columns. Uh, we can also fill it with uh, random values using the random module from, from NumPy, so with random inside the random module we, we have the random method that creates an array and fills it with uh, random values. And we can also explicitly uh, put all of the uh, all of the values inside uh, uh, just a Python list, and then it will convert it into a NumPy array uh, object. So if I run this code, I will see that with np.zeros I create a three by two uh, array filled with zeros. Same with the ones. Here it's random values. So random will will create values between random values between zero and one um, with the uniform uh, taken from a uniform distribution. Um, and in this case, I have the uh, values that I explicitly uh, written. Um, so the next thing that I want to talk about is um, NumPy operations. So if I create uh, two arrays here that I've, uh, so it's just the explicit uh, values, um, and those two arrays have the same size, so three by two again. Um, if I do an operation between two arrays of the same size, uh, the operation will be done uh, on element by element basis. Um, so if I do here A plus B, it will uh, take each element, uh, so first element 5 plus 8 equals 13, 2 plus minus 3 equals minus 1, etc. etc. So the it will be um, done on element by element basis. If I do um, an operation between an array and a sca scalar, then the uh, operation will be distributed on all of the elements from the uh, from the array. So if I do a plus five, the plus five will be applied to every element of the 
A array. So those are uh, very uh, common operations. So how, how do does that apply to, um, to uh, images? It's that's what we are most uh, concerned with. Well, here in this, um, in this short code, I will uh, read the, uh, the work in the JPEG image that we've been using uh, in the previous videos. And uh, I'm plotting the image and then plotting the result of the operation image plus 50. So image plus 50, I will add the value 50 to every pixel of the image. So what's the result of that, that operation? So if we look at the first image and the uh, second image, we can see that for the most part, we have um, increased the brightness. Uh, so the overall brightness of the image. So since higher pixel values correspond to uh, values closer to white, we've increased the brightness. Except that we can see in some areas that we have black pixels where we had uh, gray pixels uh, here. And the reason that we have that is because we are dealing here with a, uh, if you remember, a unsigned integer, uh, unsigned 8-bit integers um, array, which means that uh, if we had a value here that was um, above 205 uh, with the plus 50, we, uh, we are um, uh, getting over 255, sorry, and therefore we have an overflow and going back to, um, to zero. So those uh, values here, which were around uh, 215, 210, uh, here there are now 3, 5, 6, etc. So we've wrapped around uh, to, to, to zero. So that's always something that we um, have to, 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 to remember when, when we are dealing with, uh, with images. Often they are uh, stored as unsigned integers. And so we have to always be careful when we are doing um, uh, operations that we, that we take those overflows um, into account. Um, so um, we've already in previous videos uh, so uh, seen how to uh, just uh, index one pixel. So if you want to, to get uh, the value of a pixel um, in, uh, in a certain position, we have uh, first the y position, so the, the y axis and then the uh, x axis. So first the uh, row and then the colon. Um, but something that's, um, that's sometimes that's often necessary as well um, with, with images is select selecting a portion of the of the image. So if we want to just select a, a rectangle um, inside an image, um, we can uh, we can do it using a range as the uh, as the index. So here we will take in the y axis a range between value 355 and value uh, 560. So this will be um, between 355, somewhere around here, and 550. And in the uh, x-axis between 140 and 260. So 140 will be somewhere over here, and 260 somewhere over here. And so with this, um, with this range, we should be selecting um, one uh, window, one of the, of the windows. So let's try it. So first, the, the value that we are taking is also within the window and it's uh, a very dark value, so close to zero, so that's normal. And here we can show just the, uh, the window. And so something that we could um, do with this kind of, uh, of uh, operation is um, here we are creating a copy. So with a um, copy method, so a, a method from uh, NumPy, we just create a, a copy of the im array into im3. And we are uh, replacing um, the values in another range, so the range uh, we are taking the same um, y values, but we are uh, just offsetting the, the x values uh, by a bit. So the f this one went to 260, and here we are starting at 265, and we are replacing it with the value from window. And so if I execute this code, what I've done is basically copy the left window between the, uh, the left and right window. So I've added a window into the, the image, so it's fairly um, crude. Um, and uh, I think it's quite easy to see that, uh, especially if we zoom in, that it's uh, um, copy and it's artificial, but still for uh, just one line of code, it's, uh, it's not too bad, I think. Um, so that's um, the kind of manipulations that we can uh, fairly uh, easily do. Now, another thing that's, uh, that's really um, uh, useful uh, and that we'll see uh, often in future videos is the idea of using uh, binary masks to index uh, uh, an image. So 
So the idea of a mask is that we, we can, um, we can uh, easily create one by using a binary um, operation, or we can just create our binary array um, manually. But um, here what we are doing is we are creating uh, a binary image uh, by doing a, a, a Boolean operation between the image and uh, a scanner. And so what we are doing here is creating a new, uh, a new image um, where the uh, values will be true for every pixel of the original image that was under the value of 30 and false for all others. Okay, so this is uh, the, the binary image that we are creating. So it's zero everywhere that was where the pixel value was above 30 and, uh, and one or two um, in the dark part of the, of the, the darker part of the images. And one thing that we can do now is if we create a, again a new copy of the image, um, if we index that image by our mask, we will only um, affect, so the whatever operation we do after that will only affect the pixels where the uh, value in mask is equal to true. So we'll only address the pixel where the, this uh, condition uh, is um, is true, and in this case, we are just setting those values as uh, white just to, to show the result. So you can see that we've taken all of the pixels that were um, dark, that were with a value lower than 30, and we've put them as uh, completely uh, white. Um, of course, there are lots more interesting operations that we could do um, with that, but this is just to, to, show, uh, to show how the mask uh, works. So to, to summarize uh, the basic idea for this indexing is that um, if we have uh, an array, uh, so 2D array in this case, if we index with scalar coordinates, uh, we will uh, just get uh, one uh, pixel value, so a scalar, because the shape is nothing. Um, if we index with uh, a range, uh, we will get uh, a new 2D array uh, with uh, shape corresponding to, to, the, um, to the size given by the range. So in this case, we have a five by five array. And if we uh, index with a Boolean mask, we'll only get the corresponding pix uh, pixel values from the uh, original array. And in this case, they will be um, set as a single vector as we, well, we couldn't, we couldn't really put them in, in, a, uh, in any particular shape since they, they would not necessarily be just a, a rectangle. So it will just be put into a, um, uh, a flattened uh, array. Um, finally, uh, something that's uh, a bit more complicated that we will be using um, uh, more uh, a bit later in the, in the videos when we'll be talking about uh, lookup tables. Um, and I will uh, probably explain a bit, uh, re-explain that uh, at that point. Um, so another operation that you can do is um, we can uh, index an array by another array that is not necessarily Boolean. And so the way that it works in that case, let's say that we have here a first array with uh, type uh, um, initialized with uh, four values. So we have just 10, 20, 30, and 40. Um, I have another array of a completely different shape um, with values ranging from zero to three. So in this case, um, the only thing that we, that we want to, to make sure when we will uh, be indexing A by B, so doing A of B, is that the, um, the, the values uh, here will correspond to index into the array A, which means that the, uh, highest, the highest value that we can have uh, here, so the values here must be between zero and three because those are the uh, valid index for A. Okay, A, I have A of zero, A of one, A of two, and A of three. Uh, but I cannot do A of four here. So what it will do here, it, it will take every element of B and it will do, it will index A by uh, that element and it will return an array of the same size as B uh, with the result of each of those operations. So that might seem a bit uh, complicated right now, but it's actually not uh, that, um, that uh, hard. So the f the if I just take it step by step, the first thing it will do in B, take the, um, the first value of B, that's uh, zero. Um, and so it will do A of zero, result is 10, and it will put 10 at the position uh, of, the, uh, of the zero uh, here. Then the next one, A of one, 20 will be put here, 
a of 2, 30 will be put there, 40, etc. etc. So we, every time we just replace the value here by a of uh, that value. So this will be very useful when, when uh, doing lookup tables, but uh, we don't have to worry about it too much uh, right now. So that's it for now, uh, and I will see you in the next video.